Hello and welcome. I am Tom Richardson, BookNet Canada's Bibliographic Manager. Now, before we move forward, <coughs> sorry, I would like to take a moment to recognize the land upon which Tech, Tech, Tech Forum Online is hosted. We acknowledge that we walk upon the traditional territories of the Mississauga of the New Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Wendat, and Huron Indigenous peoples, the original nations of this land who continue to cry out for justice. Furthermore, BookNet Canada endorses the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and supports an ongoing shift from gatekeeping to space making in the book industry. Uh, so today I have the pleasure of introducing Chris Sainer. Chris is also joining us for today's presentation. He's widely known for his work with the French industry liaison body CLIL and with BISG committees. Prior to that, he has a 20 year background in book selling with Waterstones and WH Smith. Thank you, Tom. Thank you um, to BookNet Canada for hosting this webinar and welcome to you all and thank you for joining um, us this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> so what I wanted to do um, with this talk was highlight some elements of Thema and Onyx which um, could be used to boost the discoverability and visibility and particularly concentrating on Canada's diverse voices. Um, the things I'm going to cover can cover uh, the same principles in other countries, but I wanted to concentrate on Canada's diverse, diverse voices. And so I've chosen examples from that I found from Canadian authors, Canadian publishers, and I've made suggestions of how to use Thema codes or elements of Onyx. If I've made mistakes, um, they are my own and I apologize. If you notice anything on any of the slides that you think, if you know the book and you think I've got it totally wrong, please let us know. Be happy to make alterations to these slides before we make them available. And if I've um, done anything wrong or I've made any faux pas that uh, may cause offense, I apologize in advance. Um, not, nothing is intended, but again, if anybody noticed anything, please let me know. So <clears throat> why are we talking about um, Onyx and Thema and diverse voices? Well, as with everything to do with metadata, it's about communicating information. It's about giving the book supply chain, booksellers, librarians, educators, and the readers themselves, enough information so they can make informed choices, so they can find those books and they can decide which ones they want and which ones are relevant. And it's making sure that that information is available and used throughout the data supply chain. So it's about, if you're a publisher and you're collecting data, it's about looking at what, what kind of data are you already producing within your own organizations? Um, are you adding that to your Onyx feeds? If you are receiving data, if you are a reseller, are you also making sure that that data is being used? Are you requesting the kind of data that you want? So it's about looking at the whole of the supply chain and the data that is available. So <clears throat> Onyx, most of you will be familiar with Onyx. Um, so Onyx carries data, metadata. It's a combination of bibliographic information, marketing collateral, and supply chain details. And particularly in the bibliographic information and marketing collateral, there are great opportunities for adding information that can boost the discoverability of those diverse voices. But Anonyx is primarily a commercial um, format. It's, it's there to help publishers, intermediaries, and retailers sell more books. Library um, standards like MARC um, are, are different. They're purely bibliographical. Onyx is there for commercial, for the supply chain, for the book trade. <clears throat> and as any of you who are using Onyx are probably aware, it's a very large message. Onyx has a lot to it, a lot of optional parts. But, and all those parts are really important to some aspects of the book supply chain. If they're a part of Onyx, it's because some part of the book supply chain has requested them and uses them. But no one uses everything in Onyx. 
because not everything is relevant to every product. However, there's always stuff that most senders fail to include that's really useful. It may be information that they already have in their systems, already producing or sending uh, in a different way. Um, but often that doesn't get included in the Onyx feed. And it's, and it's also the case that most recipients fail to use everything that is available to them. Um, either they're unaware of it or they reject it, or in some cases they fail the valid, they fail the, they make the Onyx file invalid because it doesn't, because it contains too much information. I think, and I will emphasize this, communication in the supply chain is very important. Data, people who create data, people who are data recipients, people who are going to use that data, needs to be communication to understand, you know, I need this, we are including this, I need to use this kind of information. Editor provides very clear documentation about how to use standards correctly. Um, but I think communication within the supply chain is vital as well. Okay, <clears throat> so just to remind us of the main uh, composites of an Onyx 3 message. And what I want to particularly think about are the ones in yellow. I think each of these has elements that can be used in the boost of dis boosting of discoverability of titles about diversity subjects or by diverse um, authors. So the contributor element is very important and I'm going to be highlighting some of the aspects of contributor information that you could be looking at. Edition, that's about saying things like it's available as a large print, it's available as a bilingual edition, a multilingual edition, a highly readable edition, that kind of thing. The language element, I should be looking at that again in a bit of detail, very important. Um, extents, um, from an Onyx point of view, that's the part of Onyx where you would send information about page count and things like that. In the context of diversity, it's also where you can send information about illustrations, and illustrations are very important in children's books, and also when it comes to questions of diversity. Subject, your bisect codes, thema codes, your keywords, etc. Going to be looking at that. Audience. Um, in Onyx, you can send a code to say it's suitable for this kind of audience, a trade audience, uh, a, a children's um, an educational audience. But you can also there's descriptive data where you can describe that audience. And another aspect of audience, which is very important is the information that you can attach to marketing materials to say it's for this audience. So these are the other parts of the Onyx 3 message. And again, it's the ones in yellow that I think bear a relationship to this diversity question. So collateral details, that's where you send most of the marketing um, information, your descriptions, table of contents, um, reviews, uh, book cover. I'm gonna be looking at some aspects of that in the later on in the webinar but two other parts of onyx block seven which is the newest uh part of onyx which is not yet um widely used um it was only introduced last year but is potentially very important as well it's a way of sending structured information about author events uh, an author book tour where they're going to be signing where they're going to be reading where where they're promoting their books and providing in the future uh, structured data that gives information about author events could be really vital when you're trying to reach new media, new audiences, or trying to attract um, most of the diverse authors when you're publishing, they often have um, their own followers and things like that. Making this avail information available in a structured way to a centralized point like BookNet Canada has a great deal of potential to, for simplifying the search for information about the, the events associated with these authors. And block three, um, chapter level metadata, also very important. If you do audiobooks, you should already be thinking about this. But block three is a sadly underused part of Onyx that's been there, was uh, present in Onyx 2.1 in a different way. But in Onyx 3, it's actually a very powerful bit of metadata when it comes to search, both classic search and also voice search, because this is a way of giving structured um, data about each individual chapter or 
each individual short story or each individual element of a, an anthology, because basically on it, uh, block three allows you to create a mini Onyx record within the Onyx record in a way. You can give the chapter title, but you can also give a little description of that chapter. If each author is different of each chapter, you can do that. Great way of providing structured data. Really important for voice search. That. So seven and three are something to think about in the future. And finally on this one, the related products. Uh, it's, it's about giving information about this book is also available in an, an accessible EPUB, is available as an audio book. You know, it's thinking about making, um, uh, pointing people maybe away to, to, to formats that are more accessible. So why am I talking about Thema um, and Onyx and not BISAC? Well, I'm talking to a, a majority Canadian audience. BISAC is well established in the US and in Canada. I assume most people know how to use it really well. I don't think I need to talk about it. It's also, it's not one of, the, it's not an editor standard. It's a, a BISG standard. Um, and there are people who are far more qualified than I am to talk about BISAC. I wanted to talk more about Thema because it's our standard. It's a global standard outside the United States and Canada. It's now the, the standard that's used by uh, most of the book trade. It's also different from BISAC. So BISAC is a pre-coordinated system. BISAC has a code that means one thing. Thema has um, codes, ready-made categories as well, but it's also a post-coordinated system. So that means you can create meaning by adding codes together. Um, so you will send multiple codes, but it's also, it allows for a greater meaning to be created. I've turned this simple example. So taking the, um, obviously this book can have more than one BISAC code, can have multiple Thema codes. So I've taken one BISAC code, the juvenile fiction, animals, bears, that's, that's a code meaning one thing. And giving the Thema equivalent, Thema has a children's fiction uh, code for nature and animal stories, but we can qualify that by also saying it's, we can use, Thema allows you to use mixed fiction and non-fiction codes to give greater meaning to fiction. So this is about bears. And we give, we have an age qualifier to allow you to say what kind of, uh, what age group it's suitable for. So. <clears throat> Language. So language in Onyx, language is very important. Language tells you um, this book is in this language or this audio track is, is um, read in this language. Um, it's uh, also, you can say it has been translated from this language or this product is available in, in this language plus this language. Um, language, uh, particularly when we're talking about non-majority languages um, in a country, or languages that may only be spoken by small numbers of people, etc. It's very important to identify products that are in those languages. Or Onyx has a code list for languages, which is based. It's it's the it's the ISO code list six three nine two, um, completely, plus other values from other ISO language codes. There's an ISO language code six three nine three which is huge and has a lot of the more of the smaller world languages also languages that are now extinct and we're quite happy to add values to the onyx code lists from this six three nine three if there are books being published so for example if there's a one of canada's indigenous languages there are publications coming out in those in that language and you don't have an onyx code we are happy to add that we just need to request Thema also has languages, but Thema has languages so you can describe what the the subject of the book is. So in Thema, this is to say this is a book about uh, about this language. It could be a dictionary. It could be a language learning method. It could be a book about linguistics. It could be a book that's examining how an indigenous language has been saved. It's still it's about when the, the language is the subject of the book. And as Thema is hierarchical, we use um, groupings, um, groupings that have been created by other official organizations. We just reflect that. Um, we, because there is academic debate um, about some language groupings, we tend to go with, with um, 
the structure used by other bodies, but that's no reflection on on the fact that um, there could be uh, things could be used elsewhere. We um, also because we have groupings, so when there are languages that include other language group, language groupings that includes other languages, we try and include those names in the in the notes, and we also tend to include the ISO codes as well, so we can make sure that it's clear which ones we're talking about. Because, for example, in some of the indigenous languages of Canada, there are variations on the spellings because they've been transliterated into into English, um, you know, so there can be variations on the spelling. Um, Canada is very well represented in Thema um, when it comes to indigenous languages, thanks to the work of um, BookNet Canada and Thema Group. So <clears throat> here's an example of a book from Inhabit Media. Um, I um, uh, found this book on their website and I um, used the example by interpreting what they say about the book. Um, I'm not saying that I'm absolutely correct with the Thema codes. This is just a suggestion to illustrate the use of languages. So this is a board book. It's a board book about caribou. It has six words in it that introduce young children to the the, the, the different stages of a caribou's life. Um, so I haven't included a Thema qualifier because um, from what I can tell, this is not about the language. It's it's a board book for young children, just as if you'd published a board book in, in English about uh, the caribou or in French about the caribou. You wouldn't necessarily say that that is about the language that the child has learned. However, in your Onyx, this book is presented. It's a bilingual book, so we have the edition type BLL. But also, Onyx allows you to highlight the fact that it's in it's published in two languages, in English and in the Inuktitut, um, and also that the Inuktitut is presented in two scripts. So Onyx allows you to identify books that are in different languages, but also different scripts. So we can see that this one is published in in, in syllabic, syllabics and in um, uh, Roman script, Roman classic orthography. That is a very, very important element um, in Onyx. When uh, you have books that are published, particularly in languages that are less common it's and in scripts that are less common, it's really important to include that language because it that information about the language and scripts, because it makes it visible. It makes those titles more vis visible. <clears throat> Another book by the same publisher. Um, this one is about action words. And this one is, um, from what I gather from the Inhabit Media site, um, is, it is particularly aimed at learning words. Um, so I've included in Thema um, an indication that it's about uh, it's an educational thing for learning your native languages. But I've also put in a Thema qualifier because it's about um, Inuktitut. Um, as you can see, the Onyx is exactly the same. But this gives us the opportunity, if somebody was searching for books in Inuktitut, it, it is there. And if anybody is looking for books about it, there's also the qualifier gives us that extra detail. And my apologies if, uh, for my pronunciation. Um, language in, the, in Onyx is also present to, um, for most of the fields where you can send descriptive text. You can say this text is in this language. So if you see you have the green language element here, um, this means it's in English. And this particular descriptive text is um, one of the many little descriptive texts that you can send in Onyx and is really important. This is is like a headline for a contributor. Um, you'll be sending your main biography, but you can also send this. It can be, it should be like one sentence. It's a very useful field for including information that could highlight some um, aspects of diversity. Um, it's a really good field. And you can send it in many languages, <clears throat> as with all the descriptive texts. It's really important to think about um, sending books in other languages. So, for example, this writer, she's Haitian, um, but she's been in Canada since 1970. She writes in French, but she's translated into many languages. Um, if you've got um, within your organizations, if you've got language capacities, 
put in other texts in these languages gives um, data recipients the option of showing um, certain texts in other languages. But more importantly, it improves discoverability. As you're aware, your most browsers tend to default to your uh, preferred language and often will not show results um, for other languages. But um, people may be searching for these books in French, but coming from an English area. They may be searching for them in English, but coming from a Spanish speaking island, for example. Also, many uh, authors who come from um, uh, culturally diverse background, come from mixed heritage backgrounds, people may, they may have more than one native language, one more, more than one maternal language. So it can be quite useful also to include a little bit of text if they have another language in that language as well. Other people may search for the, um, their works using that language. The particular example I've given hat is Haitian Creole. So it's there. The contributors themselves may be willing to give you a bit of this text. And speaking of contributors, I think every every Canadian publisher is probably familiar with the first part of this element, which is the fact that you can send in Onyx the fact that this contributor is a citizen of Canada. But in Onyx 3, you can send a lot of different information that can be, you can send information about um, which region of Canada they live in. You can also send names of cities and things like that. There's a lot of different um, relationships that you can create. And sometimes those relationships are really important. The born in and the currently resides in. So, for example, if you have an author that's um, migrated to Canada from Jamaica or from the Dominican Republic or, or from Vietnam, it's quite interesting um, to be able to highlight that information in your Onyx, providing the contributor is happy with that information. The other important thing to, uh, is that um, location name. So it's there so you can send a city name. It's there so you can send any place name or any um, location that could be um, associated with a contributor. Um, and it can also carry the language element. So um, in a Canadian context, it could be used to send the name of the First Nation. My apologize, I apologize if I've um, not put this in correctly. I, I did try and check and see, but I'm not 100% sure how you're supposed to present the name of the First Nations. I apologize if I've done this incorrectly. But I wanted to illustrate the principle that in a market like Canada, if you have um, contributors from one of your First Nations, from um, you can put in this kind of location information as well. And because it takes the language attribute, you can also send that in in the maternal languages or the indigenous languages as well to, to boost discoverability. So I've just shown you the contributor description, the headline thing. The one that you're most um, familiar with and that you'll be sending in your Onyx is the biographical note that you will send with most contributors. Now, this example, Alok is not Canadian, he is American. The reason I'm showing you this one is um, I contacted this contributor and I asked their permission if I could use their biography and it was given to me. And that is really important and it's very important when we're talking about identity and contributors. It's, it's working with those contributors, with those authors, with those illustrators, with those poets, getting their permission um, for how you're going to describe them publicly, getting them to contribute maybe the biography themselves, write it themselves, or tell you the kind of words they would like to use. And as you can see from the example, Alok has chosen uh, words uh, within the biography that give clear uh, indications that uh, they come from a, a, um, a diverse group, uh, a marginalized group, and the language they have chosen is very important. It includes the, the preferred pronoun, et cetera. So this is a Canadian author. They have um, also written, 
their own biographical note. Um, as you can see, they have used words to describe their identity, which shows that their identity is complex, covers many different aspects of uh, diversity. But this, these are words they have chosen themselves. And then if we look at the thema codes, the subject codes that go with us. So, for example, BISAC, I believe, has, um, if I remember correctly, has a, a young adult fiction romance um, LBGT uh, code. The thema, you build that meaning up. So we have the fiction code, the YFM, for relationship stories. And then we associate that with YXB, LGBTQ. Uh, we also have YXC, gender identity, YXT, self-awareness and self-esteem, YXP, diversity and inclusion. It's also we have a place qualifier, 1KBCCAOSM. This takes place in Toronto. An interest age, 5AP. This is the interest age is from 13 and up. And then we have another qualifier, 5AR, for reluctant or struggling readers, children or teenagers. The, this is a high-low um, title, has a high in, higher interest age, lower reading age. Very, very important qualifier in theme, this 5AR, for titles that are for reluctant readers, particularly when we're highlighting um, a topic uh, for a marginalized group um finding that combination of, of for for books that for younger readers who may feel excluded for different reasons from reading um other books and we have a qualifier 5pt relating to trans transgender people or gender minorities now one thing i want to emphasize thema codes um what do you all send in your me metadata in your onyx are the codes are the the letters and the letters and numbers you don't send the text. Um, what you're seeing in white is the associated meaning of that code. It's what we display on our documentation. People are very welcome to use the exact same wording. It exists in 23 other languages, so that can be displayed in languages. But there's no obligation to use the same words we use. Um, people who use the codes uh, to, to, to display information on the public site can choose wordings that are more suitable to their own markets, to their own cultures. So, providing they don't change the, the meaning, obviously. But um, so, 5PT is a very good example. Some people may want to, for inclusive for inclusive reasons, only have on their websites an LGBTQ section, um, and that's fine. But by sending the 5PT qualifier, you're highlighting that this book specifically is talking about. Um, uh, topics to do with being transgender, and it allows people to search and find those books. Um, this book, um, staying with subjects, um, I thank to C Press who sent me um, a list of the keywords that they were using with this title. I've cut; I, they gave me a list. I've taken a few out, but purely for um, space reasons on my slide. Um, again, if you look at the theme of qualifiers, um, the subjects, we've got a mixture of fiction and non-fiction codes. We've got some um, narrative themes, which are very important fiction codes in thema. We also have two more 5P qualifiers. We have uh, the relating to peoples of African descent, which is um, a very flexible um, theme qualifier that allows people in different um, communities to identify books that talk about topics to do with people that are part of the African diaspora. Um, and again, as I said with the previous slide, if you, there's no need to, to stick to our own wording. So for example, if you're, if you're a Canadian bookseller, um, you can see that this book, um, takes place in Canada, uh, and in Jamaica. You may want to map this code and say, okay, when I see these two place qualifiers for Canada uh, and this qualifier uh, relating to people of African descent, I'm going to create it in my, uh, I have a section for black Canadians or Canadians of Caribbean descent, um, whatever is the, the terminology. I've also, there's another qualifier 
relating to migrant groups. This story is about um, the, uh, the daughter of the Jamaican migrants in Toronto. So again, we have a qualifier to identify these. These qualifiers can be used with FEMA um, for adult children's books, for fiction, non-fictions. The whole point of FEMA qualifiers is that if you're looking for all the books about um, people of African descent, you can find all of them, or you can then sort of say, right, I only want fiction that deals with, or I only want fiction that's set in Canada that deals with this, etc. Keywords, when it comes to diversity, keywords are very important. There's really good documentation brought out by BSG about best practices for keywords. Um, so I won't talk about that aspect of keywords. What I wanted to emphasize is it's a great place to put um, words that are, are trending, um, words that are more appropriate. Subject schemes like BISAC, like FEMA, are always going to take longer to evolve and to change because they have to recognize a certain structure and a certain discipline. But keywords and well-maintained list of keywords, you can update, you can change them. They're really important. And you can include keywords that make sense for different markets. Staying with subject, um, so again, we have the FEMA codes. But we also have another aspect in purple of Onyx. Onyx um, has this wonderful underused element in subjects called name as subject. This allows you to send information, say this book is about this person or this persona. That person can be real or that person can be fiction. So you can say this is a biography or about Martin Luther King or this is a book about or featuring Sherlock Holmes. Name a subject also, um, as it is in the, from an Onyx point of view, in exactly the same format as a contributor. You can include the identifier like the ISNI. Using an ISNI, as you know, allows for greater cross-referencing of, of um, information. So with somebody like um, Marie-Joseph Angelique, so a slave at the beginning of the um, 18th century, all we have is the name that was imposed on her um, by her last owner, a French name, but she obviously had different names. And that name has been described in different ways in different papers. So sometimes she's known simply as Angelique. The name as subject element allows you to identify that, also allows people who receive the data to link this to other books about her or to TV series or to documentaries or to information about the city of Montreal, which includes information about uh, also, <clears throat> on this one, um, in the FEMA, you can see that we have some Canadian-specific codes. So um, FEMA has what we call national extensions. Um, they can um, either be things that have come from a specific country. The Canada has suggested these, but they can be used by anybody. Or you know, it's um, so in this case, it's one QBK. Uh, CAQ, New France. Um, we also have the code for Montreal. We also have a period qualifier for the period of New France. So these are national extensions. <clears throat> Name of subject can also be used for fictitious um, personas. So for example, uh, chosen the the <clears throat> hero of many um, tales and legends in the indigenous peoples of the Arctic regions. Um, Kiviuk, again, apologies for pronunciation. Um, it's something that's very important. Uh, this structured way of saying this is a book about this character allows for greater flexibility when you're trying to build up. I'm looking for all the books about this character. When I just point out in the FEMA uh, qualifiers and another qualifier, the 5PBA relating to indigenous peoples. Again, um, qualifier that lets you to uh, allows somebody to search for everything that's to do with indigenous peoples. Or with this one, we can qualify it. We have two place qualifiers, um, the Arctic regions and none of it. So we could associate it with those places, or we could just say, I'm looking for everything that's for children, traditional stories about indigenous peoples. So um, 
So very useful qualifiers in Thema. And another little thing in Onyx, City of Publication. Great if you are trying as a bookseller, for example, trying to build up um, lists of um, books that are not necessarily published in Toronto or Montreal or New York or London and looking for books that have been published in smallest places or in different countries. So City of Publication is a very useful little um, key as well. So that name is subject. Um, can also be used um, to show alternative names. So uh, the other two spellings here, one is from Greenland and the other is from Alaska. It's the same character. So the name of subject is a very, very, um, <clears throat> potentially very powerful little bit of data that you can include with the relevant titles. And again, if you look at the thema, we have the qualifier for um, indigenous peoples, which relates to um, the folklore, uh, relates to the regions. So again, it's a good qualifier for highlighting titles that may be of interest to or, or are talking about different indigenous peoples. <clears throat> so back to marketing. So I mentioned potential future options around seven and block three. Um, seven is definitely more in the long term. Three is something people could consider. But I wanted to think more about block two, marketing information. A um, lot of marketing information, um, Onyx, can, can, Onyx can hold a lot of our, our marketing information. So you can send uh, text within your Onyx, supporting text. You can cite outside materials, so third party reviews, etc. You can send resources, um, so that's where you send your cover images, but also uh, page images, but you can also send teachers resources, reading resources, that kind of thing, and you can send prizes. <clears throat> and the thing about these descriptive texts <clears throat> um, is you can send different ones. Um, so as I said, and, uh, when we were talking about the contributor description, you can send these in different languages. So you can think, I'm going to create um, a text um, in English, um, but I'm also going to do one in French, because I want people to also discover it in French. Or I want to do it in um, some of the other languages. The other thing about descriptive texts is you can do different texts for different audiences. So you can create the text that you expect to appear on a website, you know, the standard text. I expect this to appear on a bookshop website or a big online retailers. You can also create texts for other parts of the trade. You can create texts for book booksellers, for librarians, for teachers. And that's really important. Books, giving booksellers, for example, if you're creating a text for a bookseller, um, that can be included in material that you send out when they're making decisions about purchasing or if that's included in uh, catalogues that go to the trade or is included in professional sites, um, giving booksellers arguments for selling the books. So, for example, if you are trying to to push indigenous authors or, 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 or other uh, diverse authors uh, or illustrators, Give, having a text that you can give to a bookseller, give them some ideas. Um, booksellers are very good. Booksellers are very important. They do a lot of hand selling, and they're, but they're just humans as well. Often, for example, you know, it, the bookseller may not be aware of some of the culturally appropriate information that you could do around certain authors or certain selling points. So if you can get information that's for that book trade, that's really good. Um, so this was just an example showing two different descriptions. So this book, this great illustrated book, um, we've got our text aimed at um, everybody. And then we've got a little text for booksellers, explaining them a bit about why it's important, why it's a good book for diversity. You can also, um, which is a very good thing, you can also say this is a text for booksellers in Canada or in Ontario. This is a book 
this is a text specifically for booksellers in the United States who are familiar but may <clears throat> use slightly different terminology. Here's a, here's a text I'm doing for the Europeans. Um, so, for example, I'm trying to sell my books, my Canadian books, to the, the UK market, but I'm going to use terms and I'm going to give them some tips and some information that might help them understand this book and the things about it that are important for Canada. Content audience, really important. Ability to send different kinds of marketing material to different audiences are really important. However, very important also to just talk to trade partners to make sure they understand the notion of content audience. Because if you're saying, I want this text, this is specifically for the book trade, here's the text that you can appear on it on the website, but here's the text for the book trade. You don't want necessarily that text to appear on a website. So this is really important that you communicate with your data receivers, tell them, I'm going to be giving you these different kinds of texts. Can you can you use that information? Do you understand how it works? <clears throat> a couple of other um, descriptive elements in Onyx, which I believe can be important um, when you're talking about diversity and discoverability. So the illustrations note, um, which can also be sent as another option, the ancillary content description. This is a way of describing the nature of illustrations. Illustrations in children's books are really important. If you're looking for books, you're a bookseller or a parent, teacher um, in an urban environment um, where you've got classes of children from very diverse backgrounds and they're only used to an urban setting, it's quite hard um, trying to find the books that have illustrations that all children will relate to. So being able to describe the illustrations, very important. It's a very, potentially very powerful little bit of um, text for children's publishers who uh, produce illustrated books, um, with especially books with diverse characters. Another descriptive element <clears throat> in Onyx, which is underused, but is also potentially very powerful, is as well as sending codes for an audience, you can describe the potential audience. So you can you can give more information about the kind of audience this this title will mostly appeal to. Um, again, and if you're if you're publishing authors that are dealing with diverse subjects or maybe doing with topic diverse authors illustrators, you know you might want to give a bit of extra information about the audience. And of course, if you're sending illustrated books, um, you're talking about illustrated books, send um, some illustrations because it's always really good to be able to see the illustrations. Um, a couple of other um, parts of marketing. You, in marketing, you can send book reviews. Um, so you can either send them as text or you can cite them with little bits of the text. It's very important when you're looking at um, diverse authors or marginalized authors, <laughs> authors from marginalized groups, is um, <clears throat> including including reviews or including endorsements that come from people who are in the same group as them or in the same community. Um, so as well as including all the reviews that may come from classic, uh, the Kirkus review or come from mainstream media and things. If you have also reviews from alternative media or media that, for example, if you're publishing and this example, somebody who's of um, African, Afro-Cuban heritage living in Canada, maybe there are some specialized channels in Canada for those, you know, encouraging um, feedback and information from those uh, channels and then including that information in your Onyx because it gives people the chance to display that or to search it and see, ah, you know, this I'm interested in this book. I can see that other people like me have liked this book for these reasons. So I, I've seen um, the, the hashtag own voices and I've seen people saying own voices reviews. So I think that's what it comes under. That notion of own voices reviews are very important, um, as well as um, the the reviews that you get from, you know, from from more traditional review sources. 
<clears throat> and the final element of marketing that I want to emphasize is prizes. Onyx has always had a really good way of sending structured data about prizes. And there are a lot of prizes that are awarded to, to smaller groups of very specialized prizes. And while it's well and good to mention maybe those prizes in the main description or in the, the, the biography of the author, putting that data in your Onyx, you're putting it in a structure. Structured data is much easier for um, search engines to find and also um, AI uh, voice in search or things to find. It's also much easier if it's in a structure for people who receive that data to say, okay, okay, I can create a part of my website that will display winners of these prizes. So think about prize information. Are you including it? Just a selection of prizes I found. A lot of these could, you know, if, you, if you're the winner of the certain of these uh, awards, it's definitely an in, in indication that you come from a more diverse, you know, you're, you're a diverse voice um, or maybe from a marginalized group. So <clears throat> what next? I would suggest for those of you um, who want to go further, um, as well as the BISEC codes, Start thinking about thema, categories, and qualifiers. Um, BISAC are really important in the US and Canada, but thema matters for the rest of the world. If you're Canadian, as an example, I'm in London. In the UK, we're very interested in, in books from Canada. Make sure that you are using things that other people on this planet will want to be able to use to find your books as well. Um, if you use thema, um, if you decide to move to Thema, there are tools and mappings that you can do to automatically add Thema codes from BISAC. That's very good, and I recommend doing that to get all your back list up to date. But then I recommend that you start using Thema codes um, separately from BISAC. You, you look at BISAC, you add your BISAC codes, very important, but then you look at Thema and you add those as an independent um, action. Don't rely on mapping in the future because uh, mapping from BISEC to Thema or Thema to BISEC, you lose out on the richness that both these schemes offer you. So you lose out on the potential to make the most of them. So start exploring Thema. Have a look at the browser and the documentation. I've just published uh, a document, Thema for booksellers, which is available on our website. And I am, going, I am writing a much longer documentation with many work to, many examples around this uh, topic which um, will be available hopefully by the end of July. Contributor information. Have a look at the contributor information that you're already including, including in your Onyx or the contributor information that you're, that you're receiving. How can you make better use of it? What other information have you got about your contributors that you're maybe not yet sending? Talk to your contributors. Ask them if, if they think their data is re relevant. Get their consent. Um, to how they want you to describe them. Do not assume that you know what their identity is. It's very important that contributors from diverse backgrounds or from marginalized groups feel that they, they, the, the way they are described matches who they are. Look at marketing material you produce and who you're aiming at that. If you're already producing a vast range of marketing material, are you including that in your Onyx seed? Putting it in your Onyx feed means that you're making that available to a much bigger audience. If you're not yet doing that, look at that and think about, maybe I can start producing certain of my marketing material that reaches different kinds of audiences. And then if I do that, can I put it in my Onyx? Look at descriptive texts. Think about, you know, am I making the best use of the descriptive texts? Maybe I'm going to start adding a few, just one or two of them in other languages. Have a look through Onyx. Um, are there other descriptive texts that could be useful to you? Um, nothing that I've talked about today, um, except Block 7, is new to Onyx. Uh, it's, it's been there a long time. It's just not everybody has been using it. And finally, talk to people. If you produce Onyx, talk to people and say, look, I've got this kind of information. I think it's going to be, it's really important. Can you use it? 
Uh, how will you use it? If you receive Onyx saying, I really need this kind of information, can you send it to me? Can you include it in your in your Onyx message? But some of that conversation might be, actually, no, we're not ready yet, yet ready to take that. We're really interested because we really want to highlight diverse authors on our site. Um, so we'd like to know, but we need to do some preparations, but this is what the kind of things we would like. So that communication is really important. So I'll hand it over to questions. Uh, we've had a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, does it make sense to include uh, prizes in the keyword section or just in the prize section? Would you do both or just one? <clears throat> keywords, keywords are really interesting um, area. So the best practice advice is not to include key in the keywords, things that are also mentioned elsewhere, but possibly this is why communication with trade partners is important. Not everybody may use the prizes to start with. So if the author has won a major prize, um, so for example, uh, the one uh, I used, um, Plantin book, the Annecy book, has just won a prize in Canada. The name escaped. Anyway, the, so for example, you may want to put that in the descriptive text, but you may also want to include it in the keywords. But in general, um, we best practices would be to to include things like prizes in the price structure um, and leave the keywords for words that are not elsewhere. But I also know that there is um, the supply chain that you, sometimes there is an element of realism. The advantage of keywords, so you can put it in um, uh, for temporarily because you know some people aren't yet ready to take prize, but you know people start taking prizes, then you can use your keywords and change them. That's not really a yes, no answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like to add a, a small supplement just because mm -hmm. the Canadian market has had a big focus on prizes. We're a very prize oriented market. Ooh. So Good. actually, the prize composite is used in Canada. Um, I don't know if Amazon uses it, and that might be a good reason for putting prizes into keywords. Uh, so I'm not disagreeing with anything Chris has said, but I'm just simply saying is don't underestimate the prize composite as a place to carry this information. That's good to know. Um, from uh, what I know about organizations like Amazon, um, they probably would, um, if they don't yet use it, they probably would want to use it, but they spend so much time clearing out the dead wood, they don't yet have time to make better use of the elements. And we have a second question. Um, an artist run institution is just starting to build metadata records and is it's a new learning process for them. So do they recommend including both BISAC and SEMA codes or focus on one? Um, I'll just start that off by saying use both and pass it over to Chris. Um, use both. Absolutely use both. Um, both are really important. If you're Canadian or Amer uh, US, use both. The rest of the world still has to use both because of certain American players. Um, if you want to be truly go global and discoverable, use both. It's very simple um, to 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 add both. Um, it just take you know it's a few minutes longer or on each title or a few seconds longer on each title once you get used to it. So add both. Um, I believe we don't have any more questions. I mean, Chris, would you mind if I asked you one? No, not at all. Uh, just to, not as a filler, but just to give somebody a chance to sort of like get something up. Um, okay, I, I booked in Canada loads metadata, and in my experience, companies using Thema ignore the qualifier list. It's the weirdest thing. And my most extreme example would be a Polish language instruction company whose Onyx records didn't supply language qualifiers, which is basic to providing the language information. I mean, it, it's kind of boggling that they wouldn't. So do you have any idea why this happens or ways for implementers to understand its importance? I mean, you featured it heavily in this whole presentation, so it's hard to think anybody who's seen this would think otherwise, but uh, it does happen. So do you, do you have any idea why? Yes. Um, the if, um, one of the reasons I think is people are, are not so um, used to the notion of qualifiers. Um, people are used to use the um, the old UK Australian scheme, um, BIC, which also had qualifiers are more used to it. 
So a lot of people are looking for just subject um, areas. Um, so I think people are unaware and are uh, not as aware of the power of qualifiers, quite quite how much possibilities there are with the qualifiers. I mean, as an ex-bookseller um, and talking to booksellers, the, the, the possibilities, the potential of um, creating searches um, with qualifiers that, you know, you're looking for every book about Toronto. Um, you're looking for every book about indigenous people, and then you can you can use those qualifiers to do so much. Um, uh, there are also markets, for example, Poland um, is, is is has translated Thema and is pushing Thema, but it's you know it's gradual. People are getting used to it, so they they may be starting with one subject code and not yet using qualifiers. The the Netherlands switched to Thema last uh, April. Uh, April uh, 2019, um, and then they 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 started by adding one thema code to to the vast majority of the titles on bol.com, their biggest online retailer, and they noticed a five percent, an immediate five percent um, increase in conversion rates to sales, and that was just with adding one. But they started by adding one code. Their goal is to gradually. They haven't start. They haven't started using qualifiers yet. They're going to gradually start using qualifiers. So uh, my reason. We have another question, and it's uh, one minute to the theoretical end on. So we could discuss that maybe after. But um, uh, is there a specific field that indicates preferred pronouns for authors, or is this just information pro pro portrayed within text fields? Um, no, there is. There is nothing. Um, uh, there's nothing as an honest. Uh, there's no Onyx structure for saying preferred pronouns. Um, onyx is an international standard. Um, so if we did something like that, it would have to be something that worked for most of the global book trade. Um, I think it's something um, that. Um, when it comes to information about about the contributor themselves, um, that's I, I've emphasised the importance of the text fields, and I've emphasised the importance of consent. Because what's very interesting is that some some contributors really want that information; they make it public. They want people to talk about it. Some contributors um, do not like to be put into into certain boxes. And the, the notion of pronoun is very important in the English language, and um, is um, that's why I used the examples, but we do not have a field for it. Um, if it's something that, you know, the let's say the Canadian, the US, the Australian, the UK, you know, they got to, they, they, those book trades started saying, yes, can you provide us with um, something to include this? We, we could look at it. It would be discussed by the International Steering Committee. It would probably mean adding an extra bit to Onyx, but um, you can't do it yet. So um, that's why I recommend using the descriptive uh, fields. Um, you, I think for example, the, the headline, the contributor description, there's, um, there's nothing wrong if that's, that's um, important to the contributor. Um, you could put it in there. Sorry, it's. I know it's a complex and a very important uh, topic, but at the moment, there's no specific field. Um, we should probably close up, but just to supplement that, the slides will be available from this as well as um, this presentation. Uh, and you'll notice in, there's, there was an example, uh, I think more than one example, where pronouns were provided as part of the bibliographic note, uh, which would be sort of, I think, where it would be recommended for. Uh, and second, um, Canada does have a bibliographic committee or there in, an interest in in contributing to FEMA and metadata in general. Um, so if people want to get in touch with me to carry on a conversation like this, like um, I would be very curious to know why anyone would think this would be a good idea to have um, 
as a metadata field for yes, no type thing for what amounts to a diversity value, which is very complicated. So, I mean, I, we know that people want this material, but I've not, we've not had a very good uh, specification for it. And the route to Chris theoretically should be between, uh, through a, a national committee, which the US has BISG, Canada has, has one run by BookNet Canada. So we would, you know, hope you would run through us. Not that it's difficult to get in touch with Chris and he will respond. Um, and that was a fabulous presentation and I'm really, really impressed. You've upped the, um, you upped the game in terms of webinars here. Uh, this is way better than we deserve. Um, so I just want to end by thanking everyone who attended. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Chris, you want to say anything? Please do. Yes, thank you. Um, I look forward to being able to do these presentations in the future in person. I'd love coming to Canada. Um, also, uh, watch out for the documentation that we are publishing uh, about uh, diversity and inclusion and using Thema and Onyx, which is going to be published this month, which I then will encourage people to, to start discussions and come back to us about things maybe that we need to look at Thema. Um, I'd echo Tom's um, um, saying that, the, that Canada has a very good metadata group. And for example, if there are things that you think need to be added to Thema or to Onyx or that reflect diversity questions, you should get involved with the BookNet group. Thank you.